Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all enjoying your summer. I am slipping in today to just do a really quick video. I wanna show you something. I have said from the beginning that when you're trying to breed uh, hornworms, um, use everyday products to help you on your journey. You don't have to have exactly what I have, but use everyday products. And I'm gonna give you an example. I happen to have a manduka on my shirt right now that arrived this morning. Okay? Cute little manduka moth. So because this little, this little one's gonna need some nectar soon, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I do. Um, this is really easy. Use everyday products that you find. I'm a big fan of silicone. So what I've already done is I've already added, taken some sugar, a couple of drops of almond because it smells similar to the flowers that they are drawn to. I do not know what those flowers are because all of mine are just for teaching. So I do not know which ones exactly they're attracted to, but from what I understand, almond or vanilla tends to help them along, help them find the nectar. Anyway, these are little Mexican salsa dishes that I got at the grocery store several years ago. They come in red, they come in yellow. You know, I just really bought them for salsa, but I found that because of their bright colors and they're easy to take care of, they're perfect for setting up nectar. So here we have this salsa dish. I have then, I then went to um, an equestrian store and purchased my favorite thing in the world, which is the bandage that you put on if an animal is injured. Um, they come in many, many colors. They're not expensive. And I create a rim right here so it helps them to hang on and drink, okay? Then I go one step further. I'm a little bit nuts about this, but I can't stand it when they drown. And sometimes they do if they can't get back out. So guess what? I've taken a, a simple kitchen strainer. You can get them anywhere. I lined it with the stretchy uh, bandage in yellow and I cap it off right here, okay? So then I pour the nectar that I've created in there and guess what? Nobody drowns because they can still, the nectar, you just have to keep it full. They can't really fall in. They can, if they do fall in, they can climb out. They can climb out on the silicone or they can climb out and grab onto here. And that's really what I'm a big proponent of. Use the everyday items that you can find in the dollar store or anywhere. Just think it through. What do you need? You need silicone. You need things that they can grab onto. So it doesn't have to be an expensive ordeal. Just get creative. Think it through. What do you need them to be able to do? And then find those products that work for you personally. And that's what I've done. Right here, I have a red one. I'm getting ready to feed this little one. Um, and when I take the dish out that I'm using right now, it's just a Pyrex dish, um, I'm going to end up putting this on it. Okay. Again, you can get these anywhere and they're silicone and this will keep it from not being able to get out if it falls in the nectar, which obviously happens. So having said that, let me show you, see, and then the nectar is down there and then it's protected. Easy peasy, right? So I just wanted to show you that today. I am so glad that so many of you are trying to breed your own hornworms. It is a skill that takes a little while, but once you master it, you always have the confidence to know you can feed your babies. It just takes, you know, a couple of cycles, you know, and then they gotta grow and they grow really quickly. So once you get it down, once you know how to do it, you can be self-sustaining. It's not a money maker, but it's not expensive to do it either, just depending on your setup. So have a blessed day, everyone. Please subscribe, hit the thumbs up if you like this, and really have a blessed day. I wish the best for everyone all the time. Take care of yourself, and remember, God is awesome.